Welcome back to the Wisely Automotive YouTube channel and to another preparation video. Now, on this occasion, we're looking at an iX, and this is the car that featured in Martin's last video, which you may have seen. And the eagle-eyed amongst you may have noticed a little imperfection right here on the front grille. And shortly, I'm gonna show you how that little imperfection has turned into quite the can of worms. Let me jump in here very quickly and explain the reasoning behind this design because it's quite a bit different to other BMWs. Firstly, yes, on the i3, if you have adaptive cruise control, it's entirely camera based, but here it's using a radar as well. And BMW really decided to mount that radar centrally in the vehicle. And that's actually the reason why if you look at the surround of the kidney grill, there is no spoke going down the middle. And you've got that acrylic panel, as Arthur mentioned, to make sure that the radar has a clear view of what's ahead. BMW is marketing this as a self-healing grill because I think in testing they have realized that it will accumulate some little imperfections. And it does feel like it's covered in some kind of a PPF or it's the material itself where if you heat it up, it does kind of regenerate and smooth out on the surface. However, in this case, a stone has gone through and caused a massive crack. And it's not only cosmetic, because if you look really closely to make sure that the radar does not get obstructed in the winter time by snow and ice, that entire grill is heated and you can see the heating elements inside. And unfortunately, that's where we come to cost and how it needs to be repaired. So that's where I will move you back to Arthur. So cost is exactly the reason why we decided to actually show you this, because out of the two IXs we've had, on both of them, we've had to replace this panel. Now, obviously that could just be really bad luck, but with this being the most pronounced part of the car, it's not unusual for areas like this to get damaged. Now on a normal car, kidney grills or something, maybe 100 quid, 200 quid, bit of paint. This, however, is quite a lot different. And imagine our surprise when we found out that one of these is 629 pounds plus VAT to buy new. So maybe we've just had a bad stroke of luck and hopefully third time lucky, the third one that arrives won't have any damage, but I have a feeling this is gonna become quite a common job. And as a result, we thought we'd show you all about it and also, I guess, advertise the fact that it's something that we can do. Although annoying and obviously 629 pounds plus VAT is quite a dent to our margin, it is at least an opportunity to get under the bonnet of the iX and start to learn a bit about these cars. Now, on the subject of bonnet, a bit like other cars which you could maybe consider iconic, the Audi A2, the BMW i8, the bonnet on an iX is non-user openable. I mean, you can open it and I'm sure you can find out online how to. It's really not difficult at all and we'll overlay where the pull cords are for that. Once you've opened the bonnet, the first surprise will be that there's no gas struts and I guess that's in an effort to save weight. BMW have thought ahead though and they've got some sort of cleverly positioned holes and a special tool which is really just a glorified bar or rod, uh, which kind of lines up at the right height and holds everything safe so you can obviously work under here. The correct size screwdriver will work just fine, but it's important to do both sides, of course. So we've ordered the new part from BMW. It was tempting to try and buy one secondhand. They are on eBay, etc., for sort of 100 to 300 pounds, uh, but there are really I think at least three or four different part numbers for the pre-facelift, depending on the color scheme you've got. And then there's also a facelift. And although we think that the general kind of, uh, the way it's fitted is the same on the face of the design is different. So again, more part numbers. And of all the ones we saw online secondhand, I wasn't convinced that any of them are exactly the right one. They probably will work if they're the wrong color, but we'd like to do things right. So we bought the new one. In terms of fitting it, this isn't gonna be a sort of how-to guide. However, generally speaking, it's not too difficult. You've gotta first take the number plate plinth off, which is simply screws. Then there's a sort of wind buffer, which lives up here. That simply pops off with several little clips. And then the main, uh, the main challenge is removing this uh, surround, which sort of sits here. So there's a little cap here that you sort of pry out the way and behind it there's a screw and also thanks to the BMW workshop manual which is really detailed even on sort of cars that have only just come out there is also this little push uh, push fitting down here that I wouldn't have known about so with those removed you sort of pry up here there's these sort of tabs so you just let those out there's I think four of them and then as far as these ones on the side go it's just a case of pulling obviously on 
this occasion we're not too worried about damaging this because it's already damaged uh, and I believe Martin's planning on doing some testing on it regarding that kind of self-healing uh, stuff that he mentioned earlier but even once we've done that we'll probably put it on eBay just in case someone's in a real bother they've got a really damaged one and they're happy to live with uh, a little chip like that. Now things get a bit easier we have to essentially remove this by undoing all these screws here. So I'll start on this side. I've already got this one going. I'm not using a power tool just because I don't want to risk damaging anything. Obviously we've got a painted bumper right next to us. So we'll just go slow, undo all these screws. So with those screws all out of the way, the final thing before you can completely remove this is, well, you probably want to remove it just a little bit to help yourself get to it, but there's a little, uh, cable just here so if I just press that undoes there and that's for the heating element that Martin mentioned earlier so if I now just remove that simple as that we'll remove these two little styrofoam buffers because I imagine the new one won't come with that and there we have it there's the radar for the adaptive cruise and all the other functionalities which is the reason why this has to be made how it is so I'm just getting the new one out of its box so there we have 629 pounds plus fat of new grill before I go about fitting this there's two things I wanted to mention firstly the part number for this I know I mentioned earlier in the video that there's three or four different variants uh, you can see here for this particular car N787 one thing I struggled with when I was looking at buying them secondhand is that there is a part number stamped on here which you can see says 51137275811, which in itself is one digit too long to be a BMW part number, but also it doesn't correlate with that one. So unfortunately, if you're looking online, a lot of the resellers will use the number that's stamped on here, but actually that doesn't kind of correlate with what's in the part catalog. It's some kind of internal part number. So that was the first thing. And then obviously the second thing to point out is the way this grill works, obviously if you like having a stuck on number plate or a really short number plate or something like that, or generally are adverse to having screw holes in your front bumper, unfortunately there's no getting away from it because the way this works, there are already four pre-prepared holes, which the number plate plinth sort of uh, fasteners go through and mount onto this. So yeah, whether you like it or not, you've got to have a number plate plinth on an iX. Okay, with all that said and done, it's now just a, essentially a reverse of what we've done to get to this stage. So it's pretty simple, just slots nicely into place. I've got to remember to just put that connector back in, click and there we go. It's very rigid, obviously being quite thick acrylic, so it does certainly add a bit of rigidity. Until that's on, it's all a bit flimsy. We've just noticed actually that the heater element kind of strip here is a little bit different. Don't know why, some kind of change in, uh, in the manufacturing process. But yeah, I'll get this all back on, I'll get the surround on, and then I'll pass you over to Martin because we did mention earlier, we're just gonna test some of the sort of self-healing properties that BMW claim to have on these grills. So let's do just that. My utensils are ready. We truly haven't tried any of this before, so we don't quite know what to expect. And given we are planning to put this particular grill on eBay, I will try to focus the testing into this area, which is behind the number plate plinth anyways. But let's start with, let's say, a razor blade. You can already see that there are some marks here, which clearly have not healed, but Let's see what happens if you, for example, scratch the surface and you can see that I'm definitely marring that area. It's nothing too significant, but this is what you could expect if you, for example, brushed up against the hedge. Next up, let's pick up some stones and let's do the same thing. So I don't quite know how hard these are, but you will definitely notice some scarring on the top layer of the grill there. And lastly, let's say that you took the car to some clumsy workshop and while they were working on it, they touched the grill. So this is a tip of a screwdriver and I will go really close up here and do some dots as well as some scratches. So the moment I remove my hand, 
you should see that yes, there have been some marks left on the surface. And as a little bonus, I found this massive metal ruler, which is quite flexible, but very sharp. So let's say that that strikes across the grill and makes a massive scratch. Oh my God, that felt terrible, but this is all for the sake of testing. BMW claims that if you leave the grill long enough, even at room temperatures, the surface should regenerate on its own. But it's about three to five degrees Celsius at the moment, and I don't have days to sit here, watch it do its thing. So let's try to accelerate the process with a little bit of hot water. I have boiled some hot water, and let's try to do all of this in one take, so you really don't think that we are cheating this. Let's get you a nice close-up of the surface. You can see all the marring on there. And now I will try to not make a massive mess of this or burn myself for the matter. So I'm just slowly pouring the water over the surface here. And you know what, let's just do the crack as well. Let's see whether that heals itself. Okay, let's let that drip. It actually isn't too bad. And, ladies and gentlemen, let's try to get a good shot of this because all the scratches are gone. Now, I appreciate the water can be deceptive, so let's give it some time to dry. Or, in fact, I will just put it down here and grab a towel, which we normally use when we wash vehicles, to dry it off. Okay, it's not fully gone when you dry it, but you can definitely see a massive improvement. And I think if we left the hot water on there for a bit longer, we could get a better result. So let's try that. Let's drop this and let's do one more round. steaming so that's nice and warm and yeah I think the conclusion is clear so the deeper scratch is like the one I caused by the ruler that has gone almost through the surface that stayed permanent but all the other ones especially the smaller ones have practically disappeared so you could say that the result is on par with what we would achieve if we polished a traditional painted bumper I think that's all we wanted to cover. The car is now ready for sale. I will just photograph it, video it. So if you're interested, these are the photos you will see. I think let us know in the comments below what you think about the system. Obviously, it's an interesting solution, but a problem which shouldn't really exist. Because realistically, I think we will see this issue more and more often in the future, whether it will be from stone chips like this one, or whether someone just has a minor parking accident and that the grill will need replacing. So we thought we would put this out there. If you are shopping for iAxis elsewhere, it's something to keep an eye on. And yeah, I think that's everything we wanted to cover. If you want to see how the iAx actually does on the road, make sure to check out this video. And if you want to learn more about EVs in general, definitely make sure to subscribe. Thanks again for watching and we will see you in the next one.